Okay. Hmm. Oops, let me get this over here. Okay. Hello, guys. How are you all doing? I'm wearing comfy loose clothes, I'm sure, like everybody else's. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, I hope you're all doing well with all this nightmare stuff going on with the virus. Hope you're doing the best you can to get through each day. It's hard. I know for most of us, for, the, for those of us that are paying attention to the stay at home, it's very hard. But we're all doing the best we can, most of us, um, to follow those orders because there are a lot of people out there who are not listening and they're the ones that are going to keep this virus going because they feel they can still go out, do whatever they want, what have you, which is really sad. It's a shame. But I hope you're doing the best you can through each day. But today, um, you know how they've talked about you can make your own masks. Well, uh, they said that you need a fabric that is, you know, thick, that you can't just see the sunlight through. And um, that's what will, you know, keep the most stuff from going, you know, going through as you breathe. Well, I happen to have... Uh, an N95 mask that I got. I got a couple of them last summer for yard work. And um, I thought, yeah, okay, I have one left. I kept one. And, of course, it, you know, it works the best. And I got to thinking, though, you know, you can only, you know, wash these so much. And um, I, I wanted to test these before I even thought of what I'm going to show you. I wanted to test them because I thought, you know, how well do these work with letting air through? So I got my blow dryer, put it on high, put it on there while I held it on my hand. I held it like this, that close. No air went through. You could just feel the warmth of the fabric, but no air went through. And if I were to hold this dryer, this close to my hand, I would be burning the daylights out of myself, right? Okay. While well, holding this, no, it never, it didn't get hot. I could barely feel the warmth through the fabric. So one day I was thinking, the other day I was thinking, what do I have that could be, you know, thick enough and good enough to make a mask out of? Well, guys, don't know why, but something led me to this. <laughs> yeah, and I will show you. Guess what these are, right? For your floor? You know what these are? Well, I got these. I got several packs last summer at Dollar Tree. They fit my Swiffer mop perfectly, and they were only a buck, so I got several packs of them. And there are four in each pack. Don't know why, but something steered me to these. And when you cut one of these open, you get two of these. And these, you can't get any light through. And I thought, huh, that's interesting. I'm going to try something. So I put this on my hand, and I will even demonstrate if I can do it without burning my thumb trying to hold it because it's not cradled the way the other one is. But you see, it's on hot. If that were my skin, it would just be burning. Okay? It would, it would just be burning. And I thought, okay, this is really thick. As you can see, these are thick. Okay. And they say that you need a fabric that's, you know, pretty thick to keep stuff from coming in. Now, of course, these aren't like N95s. You know, they're, they're not the same fabric. But the idea behind making a mask, like they said on TV, is it's got to be a fabric that isn't, you know, really wo uh, loosely woven so that you can see right through it or you can you know just see well these are very thick very very thick and so I got to thinking huh that would make a cool mask how do I do this well guys let me show you <laughs> here's my mask I'm going to show you how easy it is to put on okay here's my mask voila okay now I want you to see <laughs> how it is sealed perfectly down here. It is sealed down here. It is sealed up here because I can adjust the nose. Let's see if I got it right straight here. I don't have a mirror, but you get the idea. 
and it is sealed right at the top. I mean, my it's completely sealed on my skin all the way around. You can see that. Okay? And you can see right here how close it is. It's right on the skin. And that's what you want to do. You want to seal your area. So guys, I got to thinking. This is really thick. Light doesn't come through it. Air doesn't <laughs> barely comes through it. I thought that's pretty good. So I thought, how can I make a mask out of this? So what I did is I literally, I gathered up the ends. I will show you. All I did was gather up the ends like an accordion, except you got to make sure that the, um, that the ends, the, the outer ones fold in when you make that little accordion. Because see, then that will keep the this area flush up against your skin. And then I just sewed, I just got thread and needle and just sewed the ends shut. That's all I did. Just like that. Oh, let's see. I can't do it with just one hand, but you get the idea. So anyway, I just had it like that. And like I say, you have to have the ends pointing inwards when you sew it. Otherwise, what will happen, I'll show you, is see how that pops out? I'll show you right there. See how that edge pops out so it's not flush against your skin? This one, the ends are pointing in so it's flush up against your skin. So anyway, I sewed the ends and then I thought, okay, but I need something for the top to seal up there. Because if you just have it like that, stuff can fall right, air can, you know, anything can fall, dust, viruses can fall right in the top. So I thought there's got to be a way to seal the top. So what did I do? I got some um, pipe cleaner, plain old fashioned pipe cleaner. I measured the top of the, the metal band on the N95. So all I did was I measured it, okay, like there's one end to that end, okay, and so I doubled it. I thought, okay, I want it to be strong enough to really hold a bend. So I doubled the pipe cleaner, and then I twisted it to give it even more strength. So I twisted the pipe cleaner like that. Oh, yeah, there you go. As you can see, it holds shape. <laughs> and then I just sewed it to the top. That's all I did. I sewed it to the top right there. Okay? Just like that. Sewed it on. So for the ears, I thought, okay, I, I want to make it to where it just goes to the ears. I don't want to have to tie something up here and tie something back here. So I got good old fashioned rubber bands. Yep, that's it guys. Got a rubber band, as you can see. I attached it. I'll show you how I attached it with a, um, oh my gosh, with a safety pin. You can see right there. See? I attach it to the front part, or, you know, to the part that's sewn right there. And I attach it with a little safety pin. That's it. Holds it on perfectly fine. But if you do that, you need good rubber bands, because if they're dried up, they will just break. You know how rubber bands, rubber bands are. They can dry up. I keep mine in a baggie and I push all the air out of it before I seal it to keep them fresh. And I had to cut the rubber band and adjust it to my, ear, to my width and my ear and everything. So I cut the rubber band, as you can see, right there. And then I just tied it to fit around my ear. So there is the mask that seals my whole face. And uh, the same thing, as you can see. I'll show you, it's, I'll show you, it's on high. I don't know if you can see that. It's on high, which is hot. This one gets really hot. And you put it there. If that were my skin, I would be, I'd be burning right now. I'd be like, ah, you know, because this one gets really hot. So the fact that it, it helps, you know, it, the fact that it just doesn't burn my skin tells me it's filtering pretty, you know, fairly well. 
Like I say, no, it's not an N95, but they did state that you must have a fabric that is thick enough to really keep things, you know, prevent things from being just sucked right through. And this, <laughs> breathing through this is exactly like breathing through this. There is, I'm telling you, it's the same, same feeling. And I guess if you wanted to, to make it even safer, you could double it. You know, you could make it a, a double mask, which would really make it, you know, prevent, prevent uh, stuff from being sucked in. But yeah, guys, I was thinking about it, and I thought, you know, as I was looking at ways to make a mask, I thought there's got to be something that I have, because I don't want to be going to the stores. I don't want to be going to buy anything. So, yes, good old-fashioned... <laughs> Um, uh, you know, for your Swiffer Mops type of thing, this is what's inside of them. Right here is what's inside of them. In my case, these I got at the Dollar Tree, and inside of each one of these is two of these. So that leaves me, I counted it out, that leaves me approximately 48 masks. Yeah. And... I feel very comfortable with it. I mean, I'll use my N95, I guess, till maybe these break, or I don't know what. But they're also, I washed them. I thought, okay, let's test them for washing. So I got this one. As you can see, I'll show you. It's all, it's all wrinkled up from being washed. See? I hope you can see that. But anyway, I put it in the sink, and I actually scrubbed the daylights out of it. I mean, I scrubbed it by hand, you know, scrubbed it, scrubbed it to be really rough on it. And it didn't fall apart, obviously. And I thought, yeah, well, let's see how well it still works. Well, I just showed you. Um, it still keeps out the heat. So that, this is hot. This baby is hot. Okay? So, I thought, oh, I was able to wash it. So... That, to me, right there, says a lot in terms of how well it's filtering the air. And you can't see through it. Um, you can't see through it at all, obviously, because it's so tightly woven. So, guys, I just wanted to share that with you because I know everybody's trying to figure out how to make their own masks. You can't order them anywhere. You can't find them anywhere anymore. And, like they clarified, it's got to be a fabric that... Uh, is tightly, you know, very tightly woven. Well, this one's very tightly woven. You can't see a thing through this. <laughs> I mean, not a thing. It's, um, it's, it's opaque. It, it's just totally opaque looking. So there you go, guys. A very simple, quick way. It took me a couple minutes, you know, just to sew the ends like this. Very, just a couple minutes to sew the ends. Uh, took a minute to, you know, just a couple minutes to sew on the um, pipe cleaner at the top so that you can adjust it. See? You can adjust it however you need to on your face. I mean, it's just basically the same thing. Something that bends and holds its shape. And you have to double it though because if you don't double it and twist it, it won't be strong enough to hold it down. It'll just kind of... Mm. And the rubber bands. Simple, cheap, um, very efficient to block the whole face. And I just, um, I'm just very happy I figured this out because I didn't have any kind of fabric that, you know, t-shirts and stuff, yeah, that's all well and good, but you got to seal that top somehow or, or tuck something in there so that the air doesn't, you know, air doesn't just go right in because you're just sucking right into, you know, right into your nostrils. Um, but if you... You know, you don't have anything like this and you do make a mask, make sure you tuck like extra fabric right in the, like if you put, if you put something over your nose just like that, you're going to have this open area here. So have a piece of fabric that you can actually like, if you've got it like this, say you're using a fabric just like that, uh, you know, like a scarf or a piece of fabric, t-shirt, whatever. Tuck something down in the side of your nose so that things don't fall just right in the sides. Okay? But with this, I don't have to worry about it. I seal the top, and because I press it right on my nose, it automatically presses down right here, and it's a nice tight fit. So, there you go, guys. Uh, ta da! <laughs> my mask.
and I make it to fit my nose stays perfectly and it's hard without a mirror here <laughs> but yeah my ears get all weird looking who cares <laughs> it's from the rubber band but it's a good solid fit and like I said I'll show you oh as close as right there see how that sealed look at that just sealed right up against my skin and right on the top too it's just sealed right there so there you go guys my homemade mask with the green <laughs> pipe cleaner which I don't care because hey gives it a little fashion statement <laughs> anyway there it is guys ah, voila talk to you later have a good one. Oh, and by the way the kind of pin I use to secure the rubber bands I think I showed it close enough to you before. Yeah, I think I did. But just to be safe it's just that. Plain old fashioned safety pin. And like I say it's got to be a good rubber band or it, it could tear where you stick the rubber band because all I did was get the pin you know I have the rubber band on the fabric and then I just attach it with a pin. And there you go, you've got your little ear holders. So, that's my tip for today. I hope you guys are doing well. Um, this is a stressful time. Today's my daughter's birthday, so I FaceTimed her and sang her happy birthday and got to see my grandkids. And um, it was really hard knowing I, I can't see her um, today. I can't. I couldn't go shopping. I wasn't about to go out shopping, um, you know, to get her a gift or anything. So, and we don't want to have anything to do with mail. So we're not ordering. She's not ordering. I'm not ordering from Amazon. That type of thing. We're staying away from mail because that's also a danger factor. Today, I just saw on the news that a, a postal worker died from the coronavirus. So we're just taking every precaution we can, and. Um, I don't know what I'll do for her birthday or when or how I'm going to figure something out but we're staying home we're all staying home she she's at home with her kids but at least I got to see her I thank goodness for this technology because without it what could I have done just a telephone call hi you know happy birthday but I got to see her which was very helpful to you know see my daughter on her birthday and and seeing her happy birthday and get to see my grandkids at the same time so guys, um, this is a hard time for so many of us and it's a struggle, you know, in so many ways. I'm very thankful though. I'm trying to find the positive because I am very fortunate that I'm living in a house. I have my front and backyard to work in. Yesterday I worked three hours straight and when I woke up this morning, ouch, <laughs> all my muscles, my thigh muscles, my back muscles, my shoulder, I was like sore. Mm. Um, but it, I have two big yards that will give me a lot to keep me busy. Plus, I'm starting a garden. Um, you know, I've, I've done a garden every year. And I'm going to be starting my garden again for flowers and for vegetables and stuff like that. And just finding various ways to stay busy. So I am thankful. I have my house, the yards, the dog, my little dog, kitty, um, plenty of food. I have my washer and dryer. I have a car if I need it. So I'm trying to find the positive because I know, I know a lot of people don't have that. A lot of people are stuck in a little apartment. Um, they don't have a yard to go out into. A lot of people don't have a car. A lot of people don't have a washer and dryer. They have to go to a laundromat, which, oh, that would really drive me crazy. I'd probably end up washing my stuff in the tub like I did once upon a time in my life. Um, <clears throat> it, I'm very thankful. Uh, hard as it might get sometimes, I am still very thankful that um, I have what I have. Uh, it could be a, a much worse situation and I know it is for many people out there and that really breaks my heart because I know there are people just struggling. You know, I, I'm financially okay, I'm retired, I get uh, the retirement every month, my social security. Um, I have a lot to be grateful for. And I'm not taking that for granted at all. In fact, this has opened my eyes to a lot to be grateful for. 
I was complaining about these big yards and what a pain they were to take care of before. Now they are my savior to get out there in, in the sunshine, um, picking those weeds, you know, getting it ready for my garden, what have you. I'm very thankful for these yards uh, to keep up <clears throat> and um, keep me busy because that's what we need now. We're, we're all trying to find ways to stay busy. So uh, try to find what positive you can in your situation, even if you are in a little apartment, whatever. You got a roof over your head. There are people out on the street who have nothing, uh, absolutely nothing, no food, no place to live, nothing. So try to find what positive you can in your situation. And I know it's hard sometimes, and there are some days it doesn't matter. It's like, this sucks, I hate this. But it is where we are, guys. We can't, we can't change it. It's what it is. So stay home. Please, please stay home. Do not go out unless you need to. We need to bring this virus to a halt. And if everybody keeps going out and doing what they want, it's not going to happen. We're going to, the longer people keep staying out there when they don't need to be, the longer we're going to be dealing with this. To me, that's enough to say, I'm staying home. That's it. So take care, guys. I hope you have a good one. Talk to you later. Oh, <laughs> my comfy clothes. I, one thing I love is I'm just wearing my pajama bottoms, my t-shirts. I'm just, it's comfy, comfy time. So take care, guys, and have a good one.